It really comes down to, are you trying to build a deterministic automation or are, is it a fundamentally dynamic business process that you're trying to automate? Welcome back everybody to this season of the Mystifying Copilot Studio, where the community has questions and we've got answers. We have a very special episode this time around with none other than MVP since 2005, Shane Young. 2005. I was like in elementary school. You know, Charles, I tell people the same thing. I was 13 back then too, so I'm not nearly as old as you might think from that. Right? I started as a kid. It's okay. Amazing. And joining me on the Microsoft side, we have none other than the group product manager for Copilot Studio, Ben Appleby. Ben, how you doing? I'm doing good. Great to be here. Beautiful, beautiful. All right. So, as promised, the community has questions and we have answers. Shane, hit us. Hey, Ben. So, you know, I get to do a lot of these presentations on Copilot Studio. I'm always talking to people. And so the first question that I get all the time that I'd love to get your two cents on how you would answer it is, how does someone decide whether to build something as a, you know, some type of automation? Do they want to build it as a flow? Do they want to build it as an agent? Should it be both? What is your answer to this question of agent versus flow? Largely, you know, AI enables you to automate more than we were able to do previously. When thinking about which tool to use or where to start, it really comes down to are you trying to build a deterministic automation and leverage AI uh, to do more with that automation for specific tasks, in which case an agent flow is absolutely the right tool? Um, or are, is it a fundamentally dynamic business process that you're trying to automate, in which case an agent is the right solution? And just to kind of give a, a specific example, uh, you know, if you were trying to, if the business process you were trying to automate was car insurance claims, um, a predictable or deterministic claim type might be a windshield repair. You know, there's a form that the customer fills in, there's some specific criteria that they need to match, and then maybe some key pieces where AI enhances that automation process, whether it's the photo analysis using an AI prompt or generating the summary of the claim. Whereas if you're, uh, you know, the claim type is a traffic accident, which is inherently more complex and specifically more dynamic in nature, where you need to leverage things like a knowledge source to understand whether it fits the policy for that particular customer, uh, then an agent is the, is the right place to start. The great thing is you can use these things in tandem together. And so an agent can handle the new claim and leverage a flow for specific tasks, or you can, you know, depending on how you're uh, ingesting those new claims, you could use an agent flow that would then route to the correct agent or uh, child flow uh, to be processed. So you can use these tools together, but largely agent flows for deterministic AI automation, uh, agents for dynamic. Gotcha. So You've mentioned agent flows a couple of times, and I said flow, like, is there a difference between agent flows and flows? Agent flows are a new type of cloud automation, and they were built using the original Cloudflow service. But the key difference is they're designed with agentic AI capabilities. So some of the key capabilities that are there today or coming soon are, um, the, your ability to de delegate to agents, so have a rich interactive conversation with uh, agents uh, that you build in Copilot Studio. Um, we're, we'll be adding out of the box support for MCP. Uh, CodeGen recently went into preview, um, and we've been adding and extending uh, this rich set of human in the loop capabilities to ensure that you can supervise the uh, uh, automations. You know, I think that's that's really important, right? The, this idea of human in the loop, right? As we start to try to adopt Copilot Studio and agents, right, the trust factor is the number one thing. And I don't know about you, but at least one of the things I really try to harp on my students with is, you know, 
you need to have a human in the loop in the beginning even if it's just a rubber stamp yep that's right yep that's right because that's where you're gonna get the iteration you're gonna build up the trust so then maybe at some point you're like hey it's been 30 days since i've said that wasn't right maybe now we're starting later we're gonna ready to take these uh humans out of the loop but build that trust with human in the loop right is that fair yeah, absolutely. We definitely agree that, you know, when I talk to customers, the number one topic is predictability followed by trust. And, you know, it's if you have an AI automation that does amazing things, saves lots of time and, and, and money 80% of the time, but 20% of the time it doesn't, that isn't useful. But if you're able to increase that predictability and reliability and there is the right supervision in place, you, it, it is a useful uh, automation uh, that does have significant business impact. And the big thing that we're focused on right now is ensuring customers can get value from AI automations. So there's, there is a new human in the loop action that we very recently released in agent flows called request for information, which is essentially extending the capability we previously had with approvals so that AI can dynamically generate forms that go to uh, a human as an adaptive card in Outlook. We'll be adding support for things like Teams uh, and other modalities in the future. And this allows you to have, you know, more than just the kind of approved deny of something that, uh, of something that an AI automation is doing. Awesome. All right. Last question. I know I've kept you long here, but, but last thing I want to know is like, as we talk about all these agents and automation and them accessing my information, what should I be thinking about around avoiding exposing that information, you know, and, and letting it all leak out? Like what are the tools I should be looking at for that stuff? Yeah, so there are a range of tools in, in Copilot Studio and in Power Platform. There are two that I would uh, I would highlight. The main one being Power Platform data policies. They've been around for a while. They enable you to control what connectors are being used by an agent, what combination of connectors you can use within the same agent. Um, so that's definitely you know the first place you should start. But in addition, we've been adding support for sensitivity labels, purview sensitivity labels. Uh, so if you use SharePoint as a knowledge source today, that label information comes through automatically to the end user in a conversational experience with an agent. And that's something that we'll be extending further uh, so that you can leverage uh, those sensitivity labels in uh, automations and other modalities with uh, Copilot Studio. Awesome. Sounds a lot like the same answer I would have given for Power Apps and Power Automate. I think that really helps tell the story. So, Charles, I have taken up enough of Ben's precious time. It's amazing to get to talk to him like this, but I'm going to throw it back to you. Excellent. Hey, thank you so much, guys. Shane, Ben, you guys have been absolutely amazing. I got to say, all things related to agent flows are probably the number one kinds of questions that I get from customers. So I really appreciate you taking the time to do this. And if all of you would like to learn more about anything as it relates to Copilot Studio, specifically agent flows, head on over to the Power Platform community. And if you want to know what the URL is for it, it's right here. There you go. See it? You all see it? Yes, you can. Community.powerplatform.com will also take you there. And there you can connect with super users, MVPs like Shane, and Microsoft engineers like Ben at the Copilot Studio forum to resolve issues, answer questions, or learn best practices. We're rolling out some exciting new AI powered features that'll get you answers faster than anywhere else. And if you haven't already started using Copilot Studio, give it a try, aka.ms forward slash try Copilot Studio. And be sure you've already subscribed if you haven't already to our YouTube and our LinkedIn pages. Other than that, we will see you next time. Thanks again. We'll see you then.